So, what is a key auction reversal? This is our key principle today. Um, in essence, guys, it's when we have a initiative to initiative. All right now, a lot of people don't quite understand the principle of initiative, so I'm going to explain it to you uh, in in very much layman's terms. Now. You get two types of price uh, action behavior. One is initiative, and the other one is responsive. Okay, now as the name initiative, uh, you know, sort of uh, means or implies, uh, initiative is where one side, either buyer or seller, takes the initiative to move price. Okay, so someone uh, has to be influential. Someone comes into the market, and they're able to move price either up uh, or down. Now, note, initiative isn't necessarily always reflected in a straight line. Okay, sometimes what can happen is you can see initiative taking place over an entire day session, in which case we get something like this. A lot of overlap in the candles, but at no point do we see, obviously, a previous low being taken out. Okay, so we'd call this a grinding type initiative, where buyers simply hold the initiative for an entire trading session. However, sometimes we can get very aggressive initiative, which looks something like this. Okay, now a lot of you would call that a flag, for instance. Okay, so they're both types of initiative. One is just more aggressive, more intentional, uh, whereas the other is is also very, very intentional, but it's being met by liquidity on the other side. And that's the real key to understanding initiative. Okay, the the the, the price sensitivity or or the sh the manner in which price moves is all based on how other participants react to those prices. Okay, so what I mean by that is as price moves up. Okay, take the first example here. As price moves up, what we're in essence seeing is that there is a buyer in the market. Buyers are dominating. But equally, sellers are willing to meet buyers at those higher prices. Okay, so they're responding, and that's the response of they're responding as price moves higher. Now, in the second example, what's happening is we've got less response. Okay, so you probably have more algorithmic type uh, programs, uh, day traders, etc., etc., who are trying to sell it, trying to fade it maybe. But in essence, there's no real liquidity being provided. No no real response coming from big time frame players and that's why we get the exacerbated move to the upside okay eventually the market does run into responsive selling and that's why we get this little flag forming before the initiative uh, continues again okay guys hopefully you've got a good understanding of that uh, and and what the basic premise of initiative uh, and responsive mean now why does it occur okay like I've mentioned it all has to do with the dynamic of liquidity okay if there is liquidity and other time frame participants are responding with liquidity the market will struggle to move aggressively to the upside okay it'll still move and grind and and you'll have a lot of overlap and buyers will remain in control um, but because of the fact that there's liquidity being provided um, um, ultimately, the market won't move as aggressively as the second example. Okay, so what does it imply? And this is the real key. You know, why, why am I going over this principle? What does what does a key auction reversal ultimately apply? Okay. Ultimately, a key auction reversal is now where we have initiative in one direction. I'm just going to change colors here, guys, so I can really illustrate this. Okay. So initiative or, or key auction reversal is simply where we get in one direction, we now get initiative. Okay, so very similar. Either one of pattern one or pattern two. Okay, so we get an initiative in one direction, but then we get an equal and opposite in the other direction. Okay, so what we call this is a V-shape reversal or inverse if it's to the other side. But in essence, what you're getting is you're getting initiative followed by initiative. Now, it's very unusual to see initiative by initiative. Why? Because think of the logic behind what's occurring. If a market initiates to the downside, Okay. In essence, there's a lot of people getting shorts, big time frame players entering the market, a lot of shorts in the market. Okay. So in order for this market to have a really big turnaround and have initiative on the opposite side, it requires what? A very, very, very big buyer to step in, not just and respond to the lower price, but also lift every other seller who wants to sell the market uh, you know, off of the offer effectively. Okay, and that's the real key crux to a key auction reversal is that it's a very powerful, uh, you know, price response to see these key auction reversals. Okay, simply because of what it takes, the effort it takes for a buyer to create this reversal with the inverse, the seller to create the reversal. Okay, now the real key. 
And this is where the strategy comes into its, you know, real importance. And again, you know, this the strategy is dealt with quite extensively uh, in both uh, courses, volume profiling or the footprint course. But in essence, the real key, and this is the nitty gritty, guys. This is the the holy grail of key auction reversals. And uh, you know, it's so important when you when you develop your strategies that you always have that. What is that key driver? That key conditioning that ultimately allows for a strategy to be successful. Okay, now the real key, listen carefully, is you have to have volatility met by volatility. Okay, it's called vola a la vola. You need volatility to be met by volatility. Okay, so what you don't want to see is you don't want to see slow grind, a lot of overlap, small candles, and then small candles reversal. Okay, that's not volatility, volatility. Volatility implies price expansion. Okay, so what I mean by that is, if these are the candles that are occurring, nice and small, we want to see something like this. Okay, so in essence, what you can see here now is the volatility through the expansion of the size of the ranges. Okay, and it's that volatility, a la volatility, that is, is the absolute key dynamic to a key auction reversal. Okay, so let's move on. Let's talk about the strategy. Let's show you what it looks like so you can obviously learn about it. So on the, on the uh, profile I'll start off with, um, it was the 16th of August. Okay, this is the Gold Futures uh, GC um, on, on most trading platforms, GC Gold. Now, how we observe this in the, in the volume profile course ultimately is we talk about TPOs and the size of the TPOs. Okay, now, what I am going to note, there's a caveat, guys. This did occur at 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, I wasn't awake, uh, and I never intend on being awake for them. But in essence, the principle is exactly the same. Okay, nothing changes. So we see very small candles. Okay, nothing really occurring. TVWX, nice and small. Suddenly, what do we get? Volatility. Y and Z, big expansion. Okay, each one of these uh, letters represents a 30-minute time frame. And then we get that continuation of, of volatility. Nice, big Nice big A TPO, nice big B TPO, nice big C TPO. And that's the V-shape reversal there. Volatility met by volatility. Equally, we've got that V-shape reversal. Okay, so that's what it looks like ultimately on, on the, uh, the, the, the market profile. Now, the important thing to understand is when you get these key auction reversals, okay, they imply significant bottoms in the market or tops for that matter. Okay, and this is the key. You'll always see I talk a lot in the um, in the footprint course about colors and using certain color lines to represent certain things. So on those 1167s, that will have a dark blue line. Why? Because this is a significant area for gold. Okay, the likelihood of us taking out this area uh, over the next couple of days and weeks is very very small. Um, if you go look at every other you know key auction reversal, you are very very seldom going to find them being taken out um, you know quickly. So what that represents is the potential for buying opportunities in this market. Um, Equally, when we do come back and approach those 1167s, it's going to take a real concerted effort to get us through those 1167s. Um, so it's not an area I'd be playing for any kind of a breakout, not unless there was significant momentum in the market. Okay, So just knowing that information really starts to add power to your decision making. Okay, Now, what we're looking for, this is the key, we get the first wave of initiative. Okay, So we know buyers are in control. Now, the trade is not to fade. Okay, the trade is not to be buying on the Z print or the A or the B. That's all guesswork. Okay, that's gambling. That's picking a bottom. The real trade, in essence, is determining where the absorption occurs from the buyers. So where is it that buyers and sellers are matching one another? Okay, and we can see that right here in this nice little pocket here, from 77s to 80s. Note the pocket for almost two and a half, three hours. The market sat here just absorbing and rotating. We're going to have a look at that area in a minute when we get onto the footprint uh, chart. But what you're looking for is that absorption area. Okay, why? Because we're not going to get down to that low. Okay, as a matter of fact, we're not getting anywhere close to that low. Why? Because the buyers are so intentional in this market. Right? The sellers are completely being overwhelmed. All we're wanting to see is where those buyers are matching the sellers because at that point, that becomes almost the preparation for the next leg higher. Okay, so we get that sideways movement. And then we get the expansion. Now note, we come back, and where does the day close? Okay, the day tests that little absorption area between 77s and 80s, fails to get below it. The next day, we open, we target the middle of that area, 77s to 80, and what do we do? Springboard, close on the high. The following day, we open, rally again. The following day, open, rally again. Okay, so from that point of 1180s, we've almost done now 22 $23. Okay. 
Where's the risk? Now that's the key question. So every trade we talk about execution, where's the key risk? Well, what we don't want to see is we do not want to see this taken out, these 1177 and a halves. Okay. Now what I am going to say is I'm going to leave this uh, you know, discussion of where's the risk for a little bit later on in this presentation just so that I can really nail home uh, a, a very key idea. But for now, what we're looking to do is buy inside that 7780s with a stop directly below it. Okay, So it's going to cost us a dollar or two uh, ultimately to have exposure to really good upside. That being said, all right, if I told you the probability of us taking out a key auction reversal the day after uh, it's occurred, if I told you that probability is around three and a half, four percent, okay, it makes a lot of sense to have a wider stop. Why? Because the probability of prices rising are substantially high. Okay, so in essence, there's a there's a two pronged approach here, and we discussed this quite extensively in the courses. Approach number one is ultimately to look to be aggressive, liquidity, you know, or sorry, leveraged trade, where we're going to be buying in the zone, tight stop, one dollar uh, stop, with good size, looking for that penetration to the upside. Okay, equally as a swing trade. We want to hold on to some core position with a stop below that low. So note the difference there. One is a leverage trade with a tight stop. The other is a swing trade with slightly less leverage. Okay. And the important thing to differentiate is that when we want to take a bigger stop, okay, we, we have to adjust our size, guys. That's risk management. We have to adjust the size according to what we're willing to lose, according to the probability of outcomes. Okay, so we're taking two different trade strategies, uh, all based on the same principle. One is for swing traders and one is for leverage traders. Okay, that's the foot. That's the profile analysis of it. Now let's get onto the footprint because this is my real sort of uh, expertise and where I love this uh, tool really quite a lot. So what we can see again, I'm going to show you that volatility. Note every one of these rotations, guys, is a five-minute rotation. Okay, so you can see that volatility picks up. We can see that in a number of ways. One, we can see the expansion of the candles. Okay, so small candles, nothing really going on. Very, very tight overnight session. Suddenly we get that expansion. Nice V shape. Looks like the letter V, hence V shaped. Okay, note the volume pickup, dark colors. All right, note the delta, dark delta. Okay, and that's all showing us that volatility and volume and, and aggressiveness, both to the downside first and then the reversal. Now, let's go to that key little area I was telling you about, those 1177s to 1180s, and let's mark it on the chart. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the market comes up, and ultimately sellers step in around 1180, and we start to navigate lower. We then go back bid again. 1180 gets tested a second time. Uh, we punch through 1180s, and we start to already see, you notice know, what we see above those 1180s. Okay, a lot of absorption. Right, telling us that they are happy sellers willing to get filled uh, around those 1180s ultimately. Okay, market then comes above the 11 or so for almost you know two three hours we sat in this range from 77s up to 80s. Eventually the market punches through those 80s and we accelerate to the upside. Okay, now. There's two things I want to talk about on this day which were which quite obvious on the footprint. So remember I said to you, the key area, if I just scroll back again, the key area is 77s to 80s, 1177 to 80. Why? Because that's the point we first saw the sellers respond and the buyers then met them around the 1177. So a battleground took place between 77s and 80s. Now watch what happens. Market springboards, okay, this is now roughly hopper six in the morning. Market springboards comes all the way back. Where does it test? Okay, 1181s. What do we see around those 1181s? Okay, very, very chunky bids being filled. Okay, so lots of sell order, but buyers happily getting filled at this area. We move on. Comes down a second time. What do we see? Buyers being filled. A third time, buyers being filled. Okay, so every single time the market comes down back to this 1180 area, once, twice, three times, buyers are happily getting filled. What happens? Market goes bid again. Okay goes all the way up, comes all the way down, right? Now we're at midday, we can see the market is now constantly bouncing, comes back again for a fourth time. What do we see around that 1181? Absorptions, buyers getting filled. Again, 81, buyers getting filled. What do we see after that? Market springboards to the upside. Okay, so straight away, if you just take yourself out of the picture of what's going on, five times the markets come down in terms of price action, five times, the sellers have sold around that 1180 and five times the buyers have happily been filled. The buyers are happy to get filled at 1180. Okay, That is the absorption we're looking for. That is the key response. We're seeing the buyers respond at 1180. 
Okay, that's what creates the support. It's not support and resistance is not a line. It's not the point where the market stops. Support and resistance is the point where buyers are supporting the market. We can see on five instances buyers supported the market. Now, this is where it gets very sexy. Okay, we come down again, sixth time. What do we see? Buyers, dark colors, all sorts of absorption taking place again. 1181. Okay, so six times on the same day, we see that 1181 acting as a wonderful buffer. Okay, now let's move on to the next day. Right? And I'm going to show you what this looks like on the footprint, uh, on the uh, candlestick, so you can really just relate to it. But remember, our key support, right, from our key auction reversal, 77s to 80s. Okay, so the day before we saw 81s providing significant six times we saw the buyers step in and buy. Overnight session, market comes down. Okay, we can see if market comes down. Where does the test? Ding, 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 1178. What does it do after that? Buyers initiate, get aggressive. Okay, and never again do we see those 80 or 77s to 80s. Okay, that effectively was the bottom. Uh, and as, you know, currently speaking, gold is trading $20 higher. Okay, let's look at what that looks like now on a 30 minute chart so you can really start to relate it. I can really drive home this, you know, key concept. So, V reversal takes place. You can see that on the left side of the screen, market then comes back. Uh, ultimately, it forms this level of buying here. We can see it's 77 to 80s, and that's de depicted by the two orange lines. Okay, loads of buying, loads of buying, loads of buying, loads of buying, loads of buying. Okay, this is a 30 minute chart, guys, so you can see how many times on a 30 minute chart, 77s up to 80s is effectively ultimately the area of support. Right. Eventually, the market's had enough, the sellers have given up, and we suddenly have that wonderful little flurry to the upside, nice and directional, and prices continue to the upside. Okay.